Hello and welcome to the Kitchen Knitter podcast, a podcast where I share with you what I've been knitting and sometimes sewing. My name is Suzanne and I live in the northwest of England in Cheshire with my husband. Today is September the 25th, Monday, and it is now the afternoon. I've had a couple of goes at doing this and had to stop for one reason or another. The light isn't isn't great. I think it's this. I mean, it's a sunny day, but it's also a very windy day, and I think it's the wind is making the light. Anyway, so I will show you what I've been focusing on in the last last few weeks. Um, I've not been knitting much lately or sewing. Um, August was a busy month. Uh, we were either visiting family or family were visiting us. Uh, when I mean family, I mean the children and grandchildren and um, the garden because it was warm and wet the weeds were loving it so I'm running out of excuses now Um, but it yeah I've I've, I've been floundering with my knitting I've picked up this thing I don't like it or I've made the wrong yarn choice or anyway all sorts of reasons but I seem to be back on track now sort of so the first thing I'll show you is a pair of socks that I think I, I'd started and showed on a, on a podcast and then I've just put them away and um, forgotten about them. So these are the Open Hands, Open Heart Socks by Twin Set and Pearl and it's a gorgeous pattern, you can just about see. I think I, I mentioned the fact that um, it's better, pattern socks are better on a, on a, on a tonal yarn than a patterned yarn. It's front and back. In fact if I put it on my, my hand it may you might see it better. And this is oh no it's sort of pulling it out of it isn't it? Oh yeah how's that? It, yeah. And this is um a yarn um by Bird Street yarn and it's uh, the colourway Kestrel and it is so nice. It's a beautiful yarn, beautiful Beautiful uh, colours. And I'm knitting them on nine inch, nine inch circulars. Are these the, yeah, no, these aren't the sock, these aren't the sock wonder ones. These are just uh, the Chigo normal nine inch circulars. Um, 2.5, 64 stitches. It's all, it's, it's all the, the, the basics. But this there's this gorgeous pattern and it's a it's a heel flap and gusset just a the usual heel flap and gusset i'm onto the bit now where i'm nearly done with the decreasing and then i'll just be down down the foot then but it's tricky oh at least i find it tricky is to keep the pattern going and think about all the decreasing and everything else i've got to remember to actually do the pattern as well but we're getting there. I, guess, I think it might be a little bit off kilter, or is it just the way I've got them on the needles to, to show? But I'm really pleased with it. It's gorgeous. So that's that's one sock in the making. Another sock, which you've seen before, but I'm on to the second one now. But I made a right mess of the... It's these, the sand... These are the sand down socks from... Um, the wool barn, Maya from the wool barn, and I have not done one of these heels before. I, I, is this an eye of partridge heel, where you've got you've got the little is, is it two 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 stitches to either pearl or knit, and this is it's not a, it's it's a slip stitch heel, but you 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 do it over two different rows, you slip stitch knit one and you is that is that an eye of partridge? Well, anyway, I've, that's that's the heel. So I I made a. See, there's, there's that, that nubbly little bit there. I don't, I don't know where that's come from. There. See, it's not, it's not terribly neat. But I made a, an absolute pig's ear of the, uh, of this one. So I ripped it all back and started again. So I'm, I'm just up at this bit now. So hopefully I'll, uh, I'll fix that. Yeah, I, I go back onto, I go onto the DPNs just to do the, the heel and the, the gusset. And that, is it the heel and the gusset? Where you where your ankle where you the the, you, the back of your foot goes. 
Not sure. Anyway, that's. I'll show you what they should look like. That's the that's the sundown pattern. That's a lovely colour too. But can you see how neat that heel is? I'm never going to achieve that. But anyway, that's that's what they should look like. <laughs> So hopefully I'll get those two pairs of socks finished soon. Another thing I'm focusing on is um, the Parallel Play Wrap by Stephen West. Um, I might have shown in my last podcast, I think I might have shown you the wool, or the yarn I should say, um, that I'd, I've chosen to do it. And that's the... That's the pattern. I mean, I've always wanted to knit Stephen West, uh, Stephen Russell, but they they are quite um, elaborate and uh, they look very complicated, and um, they're too fussy for me. And they're, they're, I mean, it's wearable art. It's it's they're amazing, but I I think they'd be they'd be too fussy for me, too fussy. So I was watching. Um, I was just scrolling through Instagram one day and um, John from Bird Street Yarn did a, a little kind of video in within an, within Instagram and it was at the same it was at the time of the release of the pattern and he was putting some colours together and he had this he was holding the, the, the these seven colours and they were absolutely gorgeous. And I thought, oh, oh, lovely. So I went, then went and I watched the video and then went to have a look at the pattern. Because I thought, oh, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to do this. But anyway, I saw the pattern. I thought, oh, I'm sure I can. That, that's doable for me. So I um, went back and watched the video again. And what John was doing, he had the, it's, it's, it's seven colours. So he had seven skeins. But then he would take a skein out and he'd put another skein in, to, you know, Playing with the colours, but I I like that original, that original seven. So this is as far as I've got, and I've done I've done seven. Um, so you can see the, how it how it goes. I haven't weaved the ends in yet. There we go. Those. Are the seven colours and then you start again and do another seven and then you can do another seven but I think I'll finish it at this this four this at 14 it's going to be quite big because this is it's quite that's and I've still got one two three I've got another four colours to go on the end of this so I think that's going to be plenty big enough and it's um, So you can fold it. Oops, everything's gone to the floor. Can you see? So there, so I've started there, and then you bring another colour, and then you, you start up again, and then you bring another colour, and then there's like there's like a schematic, so you can you can keep on track. You can colour in the squares if you want to. I haven't done that. I've just uh, I've made a note of the colours in their order. But um So the colours that I've chosen are, um, I've written them down, here we go, so starting from, from the bottom, that's Latte, do the neater side, that is Crema or Crema, Touch of Mink, that Touch of Mink, uh, Bean, Old Number 7, Pecan, and then you finish with this beauty, Medici. So those are my, that's my seven colours of the wrap put together. And you knit them on um, 3.5. What is it 3.5? 3.5. 
yes, 3.5 with a, with a large circular needle. Because what you do is, I haven't, I haven't read it thoroughly, and there is a YouTube guide, but when you start to do the next strip, as you're knitting, you're joining, joining it up. So that's, I've never done that before. So that's um, why you need a bigger, the big cable needle, which is a bit fiddly at first, but it's, it's fine. And it's, um, it's got the, the eye, the eye, this is eye cord edging. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I keep showing you the wrong side. This, there we are, that's, the, that's to show me, indicate to me what, what side is the right side, because I, I, <laughs> it looks simple enough, doesn't it? Um, I went, did too many rows. Uh, you're only supposed to do so many, so many garter rows. And I did too many, so I had to uh, rip back, and I started knitting on the wrong side. So I, instead of it sort of going like that, it sort of went off this way. It looked really odd. Uh, but that's that's the start of the of the wrap, and it's all I can get it all in this gorgeous bag from Paula, stitched by Mrs. Mrs. D. It's um it's a gorgeous bag. It's um see I can get everything in. I can get it all in there. You can't see, can you? There. All the all the balls are there. And it's got a gorgeous ticking and also a lovely label there. But this fabric is beautiful. I can't remember. Paula talked about it on a podcast. I can't remember whether she said she was given the fabric or uh, she found it in a charity shop, but it's 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 1940s or 50s vintage fabric. It's beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. And I was lucky enough to get one. So that's the parallel play wrap. I'm quite um, pleased with myself doing a Stephen West design, albeit a very easy one. Uh, in comparison, in comparison. And the other um, project I'm focusing on is this one, and it's in a good, I, I think I have said before, I didn't need any more project bags, but this is, this is gorgeous, this is, and it's big. I can get everything in there. I've got a lot of, I think I've said this, uh, average, average size um, uh, project bags, but, this is this is a lovely big one and I am doing see I can just about see over it um, I'll put it there for now. Um, I am doing the um, midwinter blanket by Martin story and that's one it, 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 it's been really it's, I think it's a make along but I, I can't make quick enough to, to take part in a make along I have tried and failed miserably so there's that one. I've only downloaded the first three, but I think there's six, six uh, squares. And then that's the second one. And that's, yeah, that's the third one. I'm showing this upside down, yeah. And that's the third one. And I th I'm sure there's three more because um, I think Paula, stitched by Mrs. D. She's she's making it and she actually quite like the Christmas trees. So I'm I'm knitting the there was um on the beginning of the of the first pattern there is um suggested yarns. The yarn the pattern calls for is felted tweed. And then there's there's a seven colourway version called the Garland colourway or the festive colourway. I haven't got any pictures of those but I'm assuming They're a mixture. They're a mixture of all, all of that. But then there is a two color version, and uh, a mold wine colorway, which I think is that is this one, the first one. I think this is the mold wine colorway. I haven't got a. And then the other one was the wintry, the wintry colorway, and I've chosen to do the wintry colorway, which is um, these two colors. No, they're not. These two colours. So this is called 
carbon and this one is scree and those are the two colours I'm going to lay all the squares in and I've had a, a few attempts at this because it is um, a, 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 a mixture of intarsia and fair isle. Now I've, I've, I've done intarsia um, for um, a while ago, but I've never done fair isle. So that's the, this is how far I've got. Like I say, I had about, I've had about three goes at this because catching the floats doesn't come, doesn't come easy to me. So that's, that's the yarn knitted up in the square. But the back, you can see, I'm getting better. Uh, it's it's neater there. Those are a bit too loose, but I thought I'm not taking it out again. I shall just carry on. I mean, I'm not sure if at the end of this you back the blanket or not. I don't know. I've not read that far into it. Probably probably tells you when you get the last pattern. And I think that has been released now because I it, it all started to come out at the beginning of September. End of end of August, I think beginning of September. So I'm, I am I am way behind. So that's. The back and the floats, but I'm quite, 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 quite pleased with that. But they are, those are too loose. I mean, if it was, if it was something you were wearing, you'd, you'd, you'd catch yourself on that. You'd... Anyway, I. Uh... So that's, so that's that, and all. I'll, I'll just put all this again. again I mean, it's three and yeah, three point five needles on it, but I'm only putting them on a small cable. Um, I don't, I, I don't know how you join them together. Maybe it's a similar thing to doing the parallel wrap where you, as you, you're knitting them, you, you knit them together. I don't know. I've not read that far into the pattern. I'm glad I've come this far, really. But it's all sitting in my, this lovely bag from Emma Eldon Woodcrafts. It's gorgeous. And I think I started to tell you about this and then went off on a tangent. But all the wool inside, got pockets on both sides and a box bottom. Lovely. This, I think this fabric is called Forest Friends. So she does, this is the large one. I think there's a medium and a small. But this is the large one. I like the idea of being able to carry it. I, I, don't, I don't pull it in, I just, just carry it there like that. Gorgeous. So those are the... Th the four things that I'm focusing on and hoping to finish soon. Certainly the socks. I mean, there's no reason why I can't finish those uh, sooner rather than later. So I haven't, I haven't done any sewing, um, but this Saturday I, I went to Yarndo and my husband came with me and we went on the Saturday we got tickets for 12 o'clock and um, we decided we'd stay the night because literally next door is a travel lodge and it, it, it had some good reviews I think there was one that was a, said it was a bit noisy because it was near the main road but it didn't we didn't hear any any, any road traffic anyway we so we decided we'd, we so we booked in there for the night the Saturday night so we arrived at Yarndale and it was busy. It was very busy. And what I what I have done in the past, I think the last time I went to Yarndale was 2018. And what I did was I walked around looking at, trying to look at everything and then deciding what I was going to buy. But I knew I was going to go to Lay Family Yarn. I was determined I was going to do that. And I met Kelly, lovely, lovely, lovely lady, and um, I had a good browse at at her stall. The, the, I mean, I could have I could have picked one of everything really, but I restrain myself. I'm going to have to go. They're over here. Um, so I. And I said to myself, I wasn't going to um, buy any single skeins. Well, the first thing I did was pick up a single skein at Kelly's Le Family Yarn. And this one, 
she actually had a, a, a sample, a pair of sample sock fitted in this, and it's gorgeous. And this one is Every Leaf Speaks Bliss to Me. And it's, it's, it's starting to uh, unravel a little bit, but it's absolutely gorgeous. And this is uh, Superwash Merino and Nylon. Gorgeous. So they'll be a pair of socks. I mean, there, it, it, there's a lot of green, but it still looks, to me, autumnal. Lovely. So there was that one. And then this one, which has, has completely started to come. So I'll show you the, this bit here. And this one is called Harvest Mouse. And it's gorgeous. I was very tempted to buy more of these, but I, I restrained myself. But it's absolutely gorgeous. And this is Superwash Merino Nylon. Harvest Mouse. It's all sort of creams and caramels and there's a little bit of speckling there. I don't often go for speckle, speckled yarns, but this is this is quite subtle. It's lovely. But I do like that. I do like that there. So again, they'll they'll make a lovely pair of socks. And I bought a sweater quantity of um Silky Yak D DK. And it's uh it's 60% superwash merino, 20% yak, 20% silk, 100 grams. But I bought a sweater quantity and I would like to knit the Tresco, yeah, Tresco cardigan in this. It's gorgeous. And this is called Tiger's Eye. I knitted not with not with Le Family Yarn Yarn, it was even even cottage yarn, but I knitted a Tresco jumper. And I knitted it far too small. So I'm going to knit this in the size that I actually am, with some positive ease, and not what I think I am, and negative ease. There was absolutely no positive ease in that jumper at all. So no, I always I I say these things, you know. Oh well uh, I, when I lose weight, I'll, you know, I don't know if that's ever going to happen. But anyway, tiger's eye, you see, oh, it must be the way I'm flipping them around. Anyway, so that was my purchase from Le Family Arm. And then I went to Telling Yarns. I was determined I was going to have some different Telling Yarns. I watched um, the Woolen Wishes podcast. And they'd been to the Southern Wool Show and Unravel. So I can't remember which which show they bought, but they had some gorgeous, and I thought, I'd, I'm going to have some of this. And I have bought three skeins of this, because I think it was going to make a gorgeous wrap. Um, I don't know what yet, but a wrap, rather than a shawl, a wrap. And it, this is called Sea Smoke. And it's the most gorgeous. Heathery, heathery colours. And it's, um, oh, it's the writing's really small. It's 100% British from farm to needle. And the colourway sea smoke, it doesn't, uh, yes, it does say. It's Blue Face Leicester, Romney, Masham, and Warbles. I think I've said that right, it's Warbles. So it's it's a good, it's a good mixture. It's it it looks toothy, but it's not. It's quite, it's really soft. But the attraction for me was the colours. The colours are absolutely gorgeous. So that's going to be a wrap. So then I went to. Um, I'm going to have to go and get it right at the other end of the table. I have bought one from Anna before, but online because she's got a, a bricks and mortar shop in Exeter. <coughs> Excuse me. I've got a, it's the tail end of a cold and a cough. Um, so I, I bought enough yarn, oh, I've not brought the pattern down, to knit um, a boyfriend cardigan. It's a pattern by Kim Hargreaves. Uh, and it, it, that was knitted in um, fine lace and mohair silk. So I've, I'm hoping that I've got enough of this 
I bought a few skins, but I can always I can always get some more um, online. And this this colorway is called Draghi. I think that's how you say it. And it's um, when I, I said so, so I, I asked what what that meant in French, and Anna explained that it was like the um, like the wedding favours, you know, the little sugared almonds that you get. Well, that's supposed to sort of represent the wedding. She 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 described that as the as wedding favours. So it's sort of sugared almonds. And I got I got a, a, um, you needed more more hair than this. My husband, that that was with the other, that was with the fine lace and mohair. So I hope I've bought enough. I never looked at yardage. I forgot. But I can, I can sort that out. So, those were my yarny purchases. I didn't really purchase anything else. I bought some, I haven't bought them down because it's, they're just in packets. It's hard to, it's hard to see, but I thought I might make, I've got um, an Alfie Rabbit, you know, Luna Lapham's friend. And I originally was making him for my grandson. Ted. But then we went down to see him for his birthday and I was this was in the making and I was just I was just making it. I was it wasn't for any particular thing, I was just making it for him. I'd made one each for the my granddaughter. And um when we got there all his birthday presents and things were Spider Man and the Hulk and who was the other one? Um Batman. All the superheroes. So I thought he doesn't want a rabbit with Liberty Print ears. So I, I kept him for myself, but he needs an outfit. So I bought the, 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 the kit, not the pattern, because I've got the book with the patterns in, to make him the jeans, the shirt and the waistcoat. It looks very fiddly, but um, I'll, have, I'll have a go at that. And I also bought um, some, a, 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 like a remake Luna to make the coat and the dress. Have a go, have a go at making that. I'll put, they'll probably go to the French as well. Um, and I bought some fabric to make a dress, which I've forgotten to bring down. I'll show that next time. I might even have it made and I, I, I could be wearing it. But I just wanted to, I need, I need to keep doing this, as I've said before, because you get so out of the habit of it. And it, I, have, I have had so many false starts today for one reason or another. I just thought I'd like to um, do it. And also, I'm not very good at editing. And... Or making things fancy. I've I've tried before. I've tried with music, and I've tried with, and the music comes in the middle. In the middle, when I've started speaking, on, and and there's nothing at the start. Um, I didn't take any photographs at Yonde. Uh, I I it was very very busy, and there's always that. I'm always a bit worried about you know taking photographs of people who might object to that. I mean, I wouldn't be purposely photographing people, but they would get in the way of the filming, wouldn't they? They'd, they'd be there. Um, and I wasn't, I wasn't confident or comfortable doing that, but I forgot, I could have filmed just go, going in and, and, and this, and, and perhaps the, all the bunting in, the, but there are a few, um, um, podcasters who've gone to Yarndale and they're, they'll be much better at filming than I am. So, uh, I didn't do that, but I did see, um, Amy Palco. She was, she was very busy on her store. But I, as I was, I was walking around. I went back to. Um, oh, I've forgotten to bring it. I went to John Arban. I bought some more from John Arban. One second. Back again. So as I was looking, oh, I'll move, the, move the crinkly stuff. I've, I've brought the Luna stuff down. As I was looking for. Um, the John Arban stand and, and why I missed it because it was huge uh, I saw Amy Palco on her I think she was helping a friend on the stall that had lots of lovely bags and things but that was a busy stall and she was busy and I also saw um, Little Lycack I think her name's Nora she has a podcast and she's a yarn dyer so I saw, I saw her <coughs> Excuse me. So I went to John Arban 
and I bought four skeins of Knit by Numbers. And this is, this, this is, uh, I think the process is they start with, with a colour at the top and then with a succession of dyeing, the, the, the colours, the colours change. And this was second from the bottom, this one. And it's a gorgeous grey. And I think I might knit just a little, little boxy crop cardigan, um, plain cardigan, maybe, to just to wear with all my inky blue and grey dresses as she wearing green today but uh, I, I, I don't stray too far from uh, from muddy colours and this is uh, it's four ply and it is 100% pure Falklands merino wool organically farmed it's got this gorgeous sheen to it too it's so soft and this is batch number 21 um, 489 and that's the most gorgeous gorgeous colour Knit by numbers for play. And then I saw this, and again, I wasn't going to buy any single skeins, but I saw this and at, at John Arden, on, on John Arden's stall, and it's called the Cat and Sparrow. And this is Rolling Stone Four Ply, which is 90% Romney wool and 10% silk. And it's gorgeous. And I think it's I think it's done in a similar way because they, they were all in a like in a, a cube, like in a box. Um, Crate, but there were some of, of these with, with a lot more blue in them. I, I went for the more understated blue, more cream. And I think, again, these would make a lovely pair of socks. And this is, uh, the colourway was Moonlight Mile. And it's gorgeous. Cat and Sparrow. So I don't know whether they, they dye this at the mill it's not, it's not, it hasn't got John Arden's, obviously John Arden's name to it, but it might be dyed at the mill, or spun at the mill, I don't know, but they were, they were selling it there, it was absolutely gorgeous. So that was my, so that was my Yarny thing, as I said I bought, I bought some um, remakes to do Luna, which is this one, okay, this one, which is the coat and dress, which is on the front of the the book, the first book, and then this is the little kit to make the um, you see, the kit to make um, the jeans, shirt, and waistcoat for Alfie. And there's this, the tweed waistcoat is lined with the Liberty print, and you get you get all the, the little bits and pieces. And I, there's no pattern because I get I've obviously because I've got the book. And then I I bought some felt and another and a, and a liberty fat quarter because I, I fancy making a, a grey a grey lunar um but for whenever and this was the fabric I bought I saw this when I was at cool crafting and I thought, oh, I thought this is gorgeous and I couldn't resist and I'm going to make a dress out of this it'll be a hattie or an earnest dress I think I've, I've bought you know I don't know whether I'll get sleeves but Quite frankly, I, I wear a cardigan anyway, so sleeves just get rocked up in here. So, but because this is quite a, a wintry looking dress, and I thought it's just absolutely gorgeous. It's quite colourful for me, and I thought um, it would go really nice because I bought this wool already. I thought a cardigan in this tiger's eye would look really nice. So that's that's a little project there on its own. So that's. That was my um, Yarndale, my Yarndale haul. So yes. So next next podcast. I say this all the time, don't I? I say it out loud, and I shouldn't, but um, I'll have something finished. But I think. I do think I'm a little bit more focused on my knitting now and enjoying what I'm knitting. Rather, I am very self-critical and my own worst enemy. But I've not been. I'm, I'm, I'm determined. I'm going to do that blanket and I want to do the shawl, the wrap, the parallel because that the wool is gorgeous. The colours are gorgeous. It's, it's just really. And I'm, 
I'm really, really looking forward to casting all these on. Uh, some, I, some I know what I'm going to do with some. It's, I'm not sure. But uh, there are definitely going to be a couple of cardigans, a wrap, some socks, and what was the other thing? It was two, no, it was two cardigans, wasn't it? Two cardigans and a wrap and some socks. There we go. This one, this one, I think I might do just vanilla socks because the the, the, um, the sample in at, at Kelly's booth was was, and it just you just you just want to let the yarn sing, so I think that'll be. But this this might take this might take a pattern because it's subtler. There's some gorgeous sock patterns out there, so yeah. Well, I think I think that's it. We got through this without any dog barking. And my husband saw, he said he would be home after lunch. That was the other reason to do it today, podcast, was my husband was out. And he said he wouldn't be back till after lunch. But it's, well, I'm looking at my watch, but my watch seems to have stopped at quarter to 12. It's, I think it's about 10 to 3, something like that. And he's not home yet. Anyway, I'm going to put the kettle on and do the divinity. I've had um, a few subscribers uh, since my last podcast, and that's lovely. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, and thank you for watching. Thank you for coming back and watching. And watching it all. Thank you. I'll see you soon.